Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use CDK and SAM to run your Lambda functions locally prior to deploying them up to the cloud. Now this is great for testing and just being sure that all of your code is working before you deploy it up, um, but I just want to run you through how to do all of this right now. So in order to make this work, there are a couple requirements. First of all, you need to have SAM installed. Uh, I'm currently using version 1.39. You also need CDK installed, and for this we're using version 2. I believe this will not work if you're using version 1, so be sure to upgrade CDK prior to this tutorial. And then you're also going to need Docker because Docker is going to be uh, what Sam is using to run our Lambda functions locally in a container so that we can get a similar runtime environment as we do on AWS Lambda. And I'm just in a pretty much empty CDK project right now. I use the command CDK init app language uh, Python here. And you can see this was just an empty directory before called CDK underscore lambda underscore local. But after I generated the project, there's all this uh, extra boilerplate that gets generated here. You can check out the readme. Um, this tells you some useful commands that you can take a look at. One of the things that you do need to do is run this activate script. If you're on a Mac machine, then you want to run this command here, which is just going to run a activate script that's in the virtual environment bin directory. If you're on a Windows machine, then you want to run this command down here. I'm I'm currently on a Mac and I already ran this top one here. This just sets up your virtual environment uh, for all your Python dependencies. Uh, so the nice thing about using CDK version 2 is that you don't need to install any Lambda specific dependencies. If we go and take a look at the requirements.txt, we can see we're just using two very basic libraries, the AWS CDK lib version 2.14 and also the constructs library. This is an improvement from CDK version 2. Uh, you no longer need to bring in like Lambda specific packages to get this all working. So after you've done all that, the next thing to do is to install all of these dependencies that are in this uh, requirements.txt file. So I'm just going to open up my terminal here, make this a little bit smaller, and we're going to run the command uh, python-m and then pip install-r requirements requirements.txt. And so this is going to install the constructs and the AWS CDK lib and, and any of the other dependencies that are included as well. Uh, so just give this a moment to let this finish. Depending on your internet speed, it may take a little bit. Uh, if this takes too long, I'll just fast forward it for you. All right, so this didn't take very long at all. You can close this terminal page now. We're going to come back to it a little bit later. Uh, also going to close all of our other windows here. Uh, let's close this and my instructions. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is, well, just showing you a bunch of the files really quick. So we have our app.py. Uh, this just tells you some of the basic parameters of your CDK stack. Uh, if you already have a project, then you probably already know all about this. But what we want to do now is go into our home directory. For my case, my directory was just this. So this is the uh, auto-generated directory that gets created for you when you run the CDK init step. Uh, so in my case, we're going to go into the CDK Lambda local stack.py. And this is where we're going to define our Lambda function. And so by default, it comes with some boilerplate here that you can take a look at. Uh, we're going to get rid of some of these other dependencies here that we don't need. Now, we do need one that's related to Lambda. So I'm going to import AWS underscore Lambda. And I'm just going to call it as underscore Lambda. And then we need to actually create our Lambda function. So let's go ahead and do that. By the way, if you already have a function that's already set up and running, feel free to skip this step. This is just to show people uh, from end to end how to get everything working. All right, so now we just need to create the Lambda function. So let's say my underscore Lambda is equal to underscore Lambda dot function. And then there's some parameters that we need to provide. So the first one is just a reference to self which is created right here, uh, which is passed in in the init function. And then we need to give it a name. So I'm going to call mine just demo handler. And then uh, we need to specify, sorry, there's some autocomplete there that's getting in the way, our runtime. Uh, so we are going to be using the Lambda runtime for Python version 3.8. So we're going to say underscore Lambda dot runtime, runtime dot Python 3.8. You can also use up to 3.9 or 3.7 if you prefer. It doesn't really matter. And then we want to use a file for our input here. We don't want to use like inline code for our Python Lambda function. We want to actually reference uh, an actual handler in a different file, which I have not created yet. So I'm just going to set that up. So I'm going to say code is equal to underscore Lambda dot code dot from underscore asset. And from here, you can just say, what directory is the Lambda handler located in? So I'm going to create a directory called Lambda in a second. 
right after this step, but uh, that's how this all works. If you use a different directory name or you have a different directory structure, then you need to specify that here. And then we also need to give it a, this autocomplete's killing me. Um, we need to give it a reference to the handler file and the handler entry point. So I'm gonna say handler is equal to, and then in quotes, handler.handle. So what this means is that within our Lambda directory here, I'm gonna have a file called handler.py, and I'm gonna have a function called handle. And that's gonna be the entry point to this function. So control S to save. Let's go and create all this stuff now. I need to create that folder and I need to create this file and I need to create this function. So I'm just gonna open my terminal. Um, you can do this either through the terminal or uh, over here by just creating files manually by right clicking. Uh, I just prefer to do it here. So I'm just gonna say make dir uh, lambda. Make sure you do this at the top directory or the top level uh, of your project. So in my case, that's at the CDK lambda local step. Uh, so we're just going to say make dir lambda. You can see it just popped up. Uh, I'm kind of blind. There it is. So that's that's where we created it. And then we're going to switch directories into lambda. You can see there's nothing in here now. Now we need to say touch handler.py. And over on the left hand side here, you can see that there's some been some changes. So now we have a lambda directory. We also have our handler.py. And so here I'm going to say uh, we need a function called uh, handle, if I recall correctly. So def handle, we need to pass it the event and the context. This is just what goes into a basic uh, signature for a Lambda function. Uh, I'm just gonna put some, some stuff here just so that we can see the events when we print everything out. Uh, so I'm gonna say that, and then we want to print our event that's gonna get passed in. And the reason for that will be apparent in a few moments. And let's just say uh, after that, print hello world. Hello world. Okay, perfect. So our Lambda function is created now. We should be good to go. So what you want to do now is back out of the Lambda directory. We want to get back to our root directory. I'm just going to clear all that up again. And we want to run a command called CDK synth. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a look at all of our CDK code and it's going to generate our template file, our CloudFormation template file. Those of you that are already familiar with CloudFormation and already users of SAM probably already know what I'm talking about. Uh, but this template file is really what drives um, CDK to work. It's what allows AWS to know what you want to create in the cloud. It's kind of like a specification file that tells you or tells AWS rather what it needs to go out and do. Uh, so now if we see inside of our cdk.out directory that just got generated as a result of that command, uh, actually, if you look at the bottom here, this is the output as well. But I want to sh show you the file because this is going to be relevant in a moment when we run our SAM command. So inside of this cdk.out uh, directory, we have a whole bunch of things going on here. Now, the one that's important for you to be aware of is this file right here. Now, depending on the structure of your project, mine was CDK Lambda Local, the name will be different. So mine is CDK Lambda Local Stack .json. Note there's also an assets file here, but that's not really relevant for us. So if we click on this file here and we kind of maybe minimize this a bit and we do a control F for uh, control F for Lambda, uh, we can see that here we have our template file and we can see here that we have our Lambda function and this is the function that we just created. It's called demo handler and it gets this uh, automatic stuff appended to it. But and this one is currently in JSON. Typically it's in YAML. Uh, you also see some extra stuff that it provides. So it tells it the handler name that we just specified, which was handler.handle, the Python version. And if you go down to the bottom, you, so if we take a look at this metadata field here, we can see in this AWS asset path, there's a file reference here, so asset dot this uh, random string here. And if we go and look at our file structure, we can see inside of here, this is where the reference to our handler is actually located. So after the build, you should have some similar files that get generated. And this is what's gonna be used for SAM um, in order to actually invoke our function. So now we're ready to do that. So let's open up our terminal again, and I'm gonna try and invoke our function. So the command to do that, uh, by the way, you probably just wanna type SAM to make sure that everything is set up correctly. You should get a prompt that looks like that. Uh, so we are gonna say SAM local invoke dash T, T stands for template. Now we need to give it a reference to this file, this template file, and it is in our current directory CDK out uh, path. So dash T, and we're gonna say dot slash CDK dot out, 
And then we need to say uh, CDK Lambda local and we want the template.json. So the template.json is what I have selected. So now I'm gonna press enter and this should work and we should see our test event that gets passed in, which currently is nothing, but we should see a hello world here in a second. And if this does not work, it probably means you don't have Docker installed correctly. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, so you can see here the image was not found. So it's just going to attempt to download the base image. And then depending on your internet connection, again, this may take a little bit, but I will fast forward it if it does take too long. All right, so it was only a couple seconds or so. You can see here now, uh, let me just make some more real estate for us. Uh, we see there was those uh, stars that I put in. This is our input event, which nothing is in it, and that's fine. And then we see our hello world, which is exactly what we have up here. Then the end of the request ID, so on and so forth. So this all works now. We can run our Lambda function locally. We can also interact with other AWS dependencies, depending on the role that you have configured on your AWS CLI. So you can go ahead and you know call DynamoDB, call S3, call whatever you want. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you really quick is the use of test events. Now, currently we're not really passing anything into the Lambda function through the event field, as you can see here, and as you saw during our functions execution. So we can use SAM to generate some events for us of a whole bunch of different types, because there's a whole bunch of different ways that people can use Lambda. You can use it with an S3 event, an SNS event, an SQS event, a step function, so on and so forth. So what I wanna do now is I just want to create a directory called events and let's change into events really quick and clear all this out. Now we can say sam local generate dash event and then we want to use SNS and there's a whole bunch of different ones that are offered but I'm going to use SNS in this case and then you can say notification and this outputs a notification for you and you can just copy this guy like I am doing right now and I'm going to create a file now called um, let's call this SNS underscore event dot uh, JSON, not dot pi. And so if you look at our file structure over here or our project structure inside the events directory, we have this SNS event. Uh, I'm going to just paste in what we put in there. So you can see everything is pasted in. Make sure to save that or else uh, this won't persist. And we can run that same command again, that uh, Sam local uh, invoke if I can find it in my history here there it is and then we can just add dash e and then we say current directory events slash sns underscore event dot json and now this event that we just generated should be passed in the input and we should see a printout of that event uh, in a second here when this runs. Okay, one thing I forgot to do is that you need to back out of the events directory. So make sure you back up to the root directory. And then we're gonna run that command again here. So just the same thing with dash E and events slash SNS underscore event dot JSON. So this should work now. Uh, you can see it's performing the same steps. You can see now in between the asterisks, this is the event that gets passed in. So you can use this to simulate a whole bunch of different things for your Lambda function and test event inputs of a variety of different types. Great for unit testing, great for a whole bunch of other types of testing. But I hope this video was useful showing you how you can use CDK and uh, SAM to run your Lambda functions locally. Let me know what you think of this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.